Hey guys, Drew here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be doing a little sit down talking video because I realized the other day, and because I'm also moving right now, so I only have like the decor that you see currently out and about on top of this tabletop, and then I have to pack it up after this video. I realized that I have not really ever done a video where I answered your guys' questions or I've talked about myself. I am just not somebody to talk about myself. Like I swear to you, when I go to a party, I like hearing about everyone else, and I don't really like hearing about myself, you know? Like I'm just that person that keeps everything to myself and I have never really talked about myself on my channel so a lot of you guys don't even know about my family or anything related to like my personal life at all but super quickly before jumping into today's video I am so excited because I am restocking my merch today which is very very exciting the Lone Fox blue signature embroidered hoodie which is the one I'm currently wearing right now has been out of stock for months and I have literally I think on the back end of my website I have like 650 restock requests which is crazy so I just have not had this on the website for so long and it is finally back on the website so if you have been wanting a blue logo hoodie it's back it's also available in black as well so if black's more of your colorway that's an option too and on top of the blue hoodie being back we also have back the logo dad hat which is like the embroidered dad hat you guys have definitely been seeing me wearing this so much lately in my videos since I've been at home kind of in isolation I have just been preferring to wear a hat over doing my hair every single day it's just been a little bit easier for me honestly and this hat is the best quality it's like a thick cotton twill so it's nice and breathable and I just love that and then it has really pretty brass hardware as well I now have it in black as well um, and I've been loving to wear the black hat it is so nice so yeah I just wanted to let you guys know about that so those are available I will link them below for you guys if you are curious and also if you would like to once you head over to the website a pop-up should pop up on your screen and um, if you want to enter your email address to sign up for the newsletter you will get a 10% off code emailed to you so if you just sign up for the newsletter you can get 10% off your merch purchase which is great all right, so these are gonna be in no particular order. I'm actually going from the top, which are the most liked comments, to the bottom, and I'm gonna answer as many as I can in this video. So the first question is from Yes to Less, and they asked, are you a dog or a cat person, and why Lone Fox? So I'm gonna start with the first half of that question. Um, I would probably say that if I had to choose one, I would be a dog person. Now, I absolutely love cats as well. I really like cats and dogs, but if I was to choose one animal to have in my home or something like that, or to have as a pet, I would probably choose a dog, just because I really love bulldogs so much. Much. I've grown up with them my entire life. My parents have two of them that are so cute. I'll put a little photo of them right here. And why Lone Fox? Now, this is something I have never answered on my channel. So I was actually brainstorming a name for my new channel a while back, of course. And the first name I actually came up with was Lost Fawn, which sounds kind of sad. My mom was like, that sounds like a sad name, but I was like, oh my gosh, no, it's so cool and trendy. Like, bleh. And I thought about it for a while and I was like, Lost Fawn just doesn't seem like the vibe. And then I was like, how can I kind of switch that up a little bit? So I ended up coming up with Lone Fox and I love foxes. My hair is also red. So it kind of like is a fox vibe, you know? And yeah, so I kind of came up with the name Lone Fox and then it had no meaning to start, but I kind of developed a meaning over the next couple of months of creating content. And essentially foxes kind of travel in packs. That's how they travel. But there's always a couple foxes that kind of go off and do their own thing they leave the pack and those are the lone foxes so those are like people like me and any of you out there watching you don't follow everything that everyone else is doing you kind of just go your own way and do your own thing and create a space that you personally love and is meant for you now of course we all follow trends now and then but we also kind of create our own vibe to the trend or put our own little signature touch on it and that's just kind of what lone fox means just putting your own signature touch on your space your room your diy project whatever it is making it in original piece of art. Now the next question is by Mundane Thing and they asked what are some tips for someone who is thinking about becoming an interior decorator for YouTube slash social media? I would probably say that my biggest tip when creating content if you want to be an interior decorator or just any content creator in general is to create quality content over quantity content. So that just kind of means when somebody is watching your video you're definitely going to want them to feel like they just got the most information and they just really got inspired by your video. That is what a quality video does to somebody and if you just have 30 different smaller videos that are more quantity based and you're just kind of trying to pump out content people watch those videos and they just kind of like skip on to the next one and they just don't even it's almost like a feeling you get like if you know what I'm talking about when you see a video you really really like and you're instantly like I just love this video like I feel so inspired to go create something that's the kind of content that I strive to create I would definitely say creating quality content over quantity content and just planning out a schedule of videos and creation is a definitely a plus next up 
is any tips for storing things that don't look nice so you don't want them on display but you want easy access to. Um, I would probably say my best tip for this is to just put it in a basket. Somehow hide it a little bit um, whether it be maybe in a basket that you put on a shelf or a basket you put next to a coffee table or underneath the coffee table. Creating like a layered look with your coffee table is quite nice and a lot of you guys know I always talk about maybe putting your bed on bed risers because maximizing the space underneath the bed is key especially for someone who has a small bedroom. You can put a ton of stuff under your bed if you think about it like your bed takes up probably 50% of a small bedroom so you can really put a ton under there if you lift it and elevate it a bit. It's a nice way to still store your items with easy access but also give them a very visually appealing look. Next up is a question by a name that I am just not even going to say because I'm going to butcher it and feel so bad. So this question is, is YouTube your only source of income? And I get this question all the time. And yes, YouTube is my only source of income. I've actually been fully self-employed on YouTube for four years now. And a lot of people ask like, how do you make money on YouTube? And I'm totally an open book with you guys. So the way you make money is a couple different revenue streams. So you make a little bit of money from the ads placed on your videos. That is not a huge amount. You actually have to get like millions of views to make a subscription substantial amount of money on YouTube, um, but you do get money from the ads that you guys see placed throughout videos. But the main, I guess, way of income is through brand deals. When you guys see me kind of do content with a brand, I always make sure it's a brand that I definitely support and love. Companies like Decenio, who made this art print right here that you guys can see behind me. Um, I love working with Decenio and I work with them on a consistent basis because I'm able to share them with you guys and you guys love their prints. So you go and maybe purchase a couple of them and they, of course, love the business. I guess that's how it works, you know? Now, Megan Lewis asks, how did you and Marie meet and decide to become roommates? So believe it or not, Marie and I have actually lived together since the end of 2014. So it has been about six years now and we've transferred apartments three times. This is going to be our fourth apartment that we're moving to just on Friday. Um, so that's going to be our fourth one. And the way that we met was just through school. Um, at the time, I was living with three other people that I'm still really good friends with, but we kind of all decided to kind of part our own ways. And I ended up needing a roommate still because I could not afford to live by myself in Los Angeles. So I found a one bedroom apartment and Marie and I moved into it together. And we lived inside that one bedroom apartment, literally in a bedroom that had no window. Um, if you guys have been following my fashion channel prior to this, you would know what that apartment looks like. But we lived in that room with literally no space in that bedroom. We had two full size beds in the smallest room with no window for two years. Then we moved to our three bedroom apartment for a year, then this current apartment for two years. And now we're moving to a new three bedroom apartment for who knows how many years, but we have lived together for six years. Jordan Reisinger asks, what do you do with all of your DIY projects after you finish them? I assume you don't have room to keep them all. And that is definitely true, but I will say that recently myself and my parents went in halves on a storage shed that's like literally halfway between both of our places of living. So like I live here, they live here. Our storage shed's right in the middle right here. So we do have a storage shed where I'm able to store some additional things. So I have like some large furniture pieces that I've created in the storage shed which I plan on using, of course, for future room makeovers. But a lot of the smaller scale projects I'll actually just give to friends or to my mom. She loves my DIY projects or um, I'll keep them like I have them in my apartment. I have a lot of them stored away for future room makeovers. So Susanna Sunshine asks, did you inherit your artistic talents from your parents and are you close with them slash where did you grow up? So I am super close with my parents. I call them at least minimum, minimum of five times a day normally about 10 times a day, maximum of 74 times a day. Like I swear to you, I'm always consistently FaceTiming or calling my mom or dad all the time. And I also call my aunt a lot. But on the flip side, I would say that I did not gain my creativity from them or inherit it from them. My mom has her own business. So she has a really great like business aesthetic and work ethic. So I feel like I definitely inherited that from her. And also where did I grow up? So I was born in San Luis Obispo and I lived there until I was about six years old. And then we moved from there to a really, really small kind of rural, farm town, population 7,000. The biggest thing that's happened in 10 years is that a Walmart was put in six months ago, which was iconic because there was literally no form of Walmart, Target, Kmart, anything for 40 miles in all directions. All we had was a movie theater with two screens and a couple of restaurants that you can walk into, the other ones you had to drive through, and a park. Literally, that is all. 
So Ashley Foster asks if I attended school for design and the answer to that question is kind of yes and kind of no. I actually went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising in Los Angeles. I was accepted as a junior. I applied early and got accepted. So while everyone was kind of struggling senior year to know where they were going to college, I already knew, which was super, super nice. And I went there for two years and I got a associate's degree in product development. I actually had applied to the school to be a fashion designer. I wanted a fashion design degree and then just a couple Couple weeks before going I actually switched my major to product development then I also have a bachelor's of science degree in business which is really nice so I have a bachelor's in business and associates in product development and then grad cat asks do you have a significant other and the answer to this question is no I have actually never dated anybody I would say that maybe in high school I dated this one person for like a day and I have gone on like two dates in my life. I'm just not a super relationshipy person. Like I put a lot of my honestly time into creating and crafting and that's what makes me happy. But I'm also open to dating, you know? Like I'm not the type of person that's like, oh no, I don't go on dates at all. Like if something was to happen, I would definitely date somebody but I'm also not the type of person that's on every single dating app looking to date somebody you know so I don't have a significant other. Alexandra Ramirez asks describe what your dream home would look like and this is just hard because it kind of changes all the time but I think if I had to have a dream home I would want something that is spacious but not too spacious. I still like the idea of like cozy and smallish so if that makes sense maybe like three bedrooms, maybe four bedrooms maximum. And I also feel like the style of home I really, really like and gravitate towards a lot is a craftsman style home. So homes that kind of have a lot of like warmth to them and wood elements and just interesting details and kind of like built-ins. Just houses that have a lot of charm and character, which is kind of like the apartment I'm moving into. So I feel like I can't really tell you what my dream home is, but just a home that envelops like a lot of character and charm and like just looks like it's been lived in and, and has like a lot of love in it. I just like that vibe a lot. So Camille, Camilla Alvarado asks, when you are working on a client's home, do you come up with pricing or do you work around what they're able to pay you? And I get this question all the time, you guys. I am emailed and DM'd every single day asking if somebody can pay me to do their home or if I have rates or if I have a portfolio. And I am not an interior designer. I don't claim to be an interior designer. I honestly do this for fun and I love doing it. It's kind of like a hobby for me and I share my hobby on YouTube if that makes sense. So I do not do any form of freelance work. I don't do design work. And a lot of the rooms and places you have kind of seen me redo on my channel have been either friends or family. So I never really take on jobs or I never have even taken on a job before so I don't really have a price so I don't really come up with pricing um, but I guess I can kind of answer it in a way that is if I am redoing somebody's space a lot of the times I will actually pay for everything inside of the space just because I'm using their apartment or using whatever it is to remake it over sometimes they do have a budget as well like for example the Bretman project that I did he had a pretty large budget so of course I use that to make his space amazing which I love that video and how it turned out or if you guys remember the two girls that I just redid their apartment recently on my channel. I paid for everything in that apartment myself as well um, just to create content and I love doing it. So it's also fun to give back to some people, you know, every now and then. Life of Carter asks, pros and cons of pursuing a YouTube career. Um, and I would definitely say the pros are probably freelance and the other pro is your your own boss, I guess you could say. If you do have a YouTube career, if you would consider it a career, you're, you're your own boss. So, I mean, I guess as freelance and your own, you're, you are your own boss or, oh my gosh, they're kind of like the same thing, you know? But I would probably say that the biggest con for me is that I cannot turn my work brain off. Like, I don't consider this work, but at the same time, like a lot of people get home from work at five and they don't need to think about it till they go back in the next morning. I finish filming a video at five and need to think about like, what am I listing on my website next? Or what am I doing next on my Instagram? Or what video content is that? I need to order these products for a video in the future. Or like, where is the paint color coming from? Like, I am constantly always thinking of what's happening next, which is Nice, but at the same time, sometimes it's kind of hard to distinguish like work from just your own personal life. And the last question I'm going to answer because I feel like this video is getting a little bit long is from DIY Dahlia and she asks, how do you edit videos so quickly? Do you ever struggle with posting often or keeping an upload schedule? And this is kind of a question that I feel like I answered a little bit earlier. Now I have been creating videos on YouTube probably since like 2011, I think was probably the first video I have done. So I am a self-taught video editor. Like I actually wanted to get into video editing myself and go to 
school for video editing. That's something I've always loved doing. So I just personally love editing and I could never have an editor. I've been approached by a ton of editors asking like if I wanted to pay for them to edit my videos, which a lot of YouTubers have editors. I just can't have an editor. Like I'm so particular and every single video needs to be completely edited from beginning to end by me. Um, and I have just done it so much that I am quick, you guys. But there are also videos like the one you just saw of me redoing my apartment, like unmaking it over. That video took me probably about 18 hours to edit. So it just kind of fluctuates. And I just kind of now know how much time I need to edit. And I'm really kind of good at time management for my YouTube channel because I love doing it. And I think that that really answers all of the questions that I, so guys, that answers a lot of the most asked questions or most thumbs up questions. Now there was like 600 questions asked. So sadly I could not get through all of them today, but I am definitely going to be doing this again in the future. So please let me know if you would like to see another Q and A video like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this gave you a little look at like my life and a little bit more of my personal life and just gave you a little bit more of a view on the person that you're watching every Thursday and Sunday. Lastly, before jumping off, do not forget that the Lone Fox merch is live on the website um, and you guys can shop it. Link in the description box below. We have the new blue hoodie comes in black as well. And we have the hats too. So that's great. And we also have the tote bags, which um, some of you guys might not know about, but there is the tool tote bag and the visual interest tote bag. So those are super cute too. And I will catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and yeah, stay safe. Bye guys.